Welcome to Samutsari, Conversations with Mimi, a weekly podcast by Dinosocial, also a member of the Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate. Samutsari is where we can show that ordinary people do extraordinary things. Tune in to be entertained and to learn something new with your host, Mimi Lorilla. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Samut Sari Conversations with Mimi, a podcast featuring hot topics of interest for both women and men alike, where we feature guests who share their talents or passion or commitments or profession. And here at Samut Sari, we share stories to inspire you, stories from ordinary people who do extraordinary things. And like what I said, as your host, Mimi, I really want to focus on the heart of what Samutsari is all about, which is educating and sharing experiences of other people. Although sometimes we have thematic episodes. For example, I had one with uh, October Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I also had one that's focused on education. And then I had other episodes that focused on online business as we continue to transition into the online world because of the pandemic. But today, I'm very, very excited. I don't know how to introduce this guest of ours. Um, I'll, I'll do with the general bits and pieces that I know about him. I know that his name is Richard, <laughs> Richard Perillo. <laughs> he is a Filipino Kiwi. I will consider him Kiwi because he is now based and lives with his family in New Zealand. And he, he, he was or he is uh, a lawyer. He used to be a lawyer in the Philippines. So based on what I um, read about you, Richard, the start ka in your legal career in Iloilo, and yeah, then yeah. for some reason, napatpat ka sa New Zealand. So I'm gonna ask you <laughs> more about that. But can you please just say hi and hello to my viewers and listeners of Samot Sari Conversations with me? Yes, uh, kia ora, kumusta? And um, uh, of course, uh, thank you very much, Mimi, for inviting me to your podcast. It's really a pleasure. Yes, thank you very much, Richard. I know uh, ang time zone natin. The people that are listening to us and viewing this um, is ano, parang spread out. There are some of them in the Philippines, some of them in Australia, some of them in New Zealand, some of them in the United States. I know that my subscribers are not as many as those who are actually listening to us. Because you can listen in, you can listen and watch the videos without subscribing. But I think mm-hmm. that with some of the good feedback that I get from this, I think I'm going to continue doing this for a long time. But for how long? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope <laughs> that I, I can still sustain this. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I invited Richard is, mm, alam ko Richard na feature yung story mo as one of the. Um, I masuturing ko bang viral to? Maybe in a way it's viral because in New Zealand, alam natin lahat na nakatira sa New Zealand. Filipinos are very good workers talaga. Whether you are an OFW or whether you are a migrant that decided to settle in New Zealand and make that your new home. And that was my case more than six years ago when I decided mm-hmm. to uproot my family to the Philippines. Kaya lang yung mga Filipino, katulad nga nung um, si Chris Villa na in-interview ko, he it was the winner of the New Zealand Dairy Farmers Award. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. a big mm-hmm. deal. Pero kung hindi pa ni... ni um, ni Chris pinilit yung sarili niya na sige na nga I'll, I'll do this hindi na mapupunta sa limelight yung achievements mm-hmm. ng mga Pinoy masyado tayong low key we we don't <laughs> like to celebrate our success and i think yours is one such story of another Filipino success in their new um country or kumbaga sa nasabi mo na na home base mo na talaga ngayon so just in a nutshell lang how was your transition like being a legal person or an attorney or a lawyer in the Philippines? Paano ka napunta sa New Zealand at bakit mo na-decide na dyan mo na itutuloy ang iyong legal practice? Oh, um, To be honest, Mimi, uh, that is uh, one of the hardest uh, decisions that I had made in my whole life. Yes. Because, uh, of course, as you said, I had a legal career in the Philippines. I was practicing for about 13 years uh-huh. as a trial attorney so it was not easy for me to leave the country but um, i was actually looking for the long term especially for my kids um, because if you're a lawyer in the philippines you'll get to see the actual situation as to how our government system works 
Mm-hmm. So, I was exposed actually to the not so good part. Uh, sabihin na natin, uh, the corruption side of it. And I cannot deal with that stuff because um, even though I was already practicing for 13 years, I'm still that idealistic type of lawyer. So I was uh, a simple Google search. Uh, uh, for example, you search the least corrupt country in the world. You press enter and New Zealand will pop up as the top of the list. So that's it. Um, I chose New Zealand because it's actually Uh, sad to say, it's actually kind of the opposite um, of uh, the things that I was exposed to. I, I really like a system that is uh, somehow idealistic, though it's not perfect, but it's near perfect. Mm-hmm. So it was my primary motivation why I left the Philippines. So definitely it was not easy and it mm-hmm. was a major decision. Mm-hmm. Kasi parang established ka na talaga sa field in the Philippines, there are Uh, I think more corporate lawyers rather than trial lawyers. So yung niche mo in terms of law is so niche. <laughs> you're you're mm-hmm. probably one of the more sought after lawyers in in Iloilo for that matter, ano? Especially kung talagang mga criminal pag trial na iisip ko yun yung mga criminal na talaga mm-hmm. the criminal yeah. cases. So talagang makikita mo yung corruption and you are also prone to uh, people that might uh, want to sway you to to um, you know baka ma ang tawag doon um, makutongan i don't know the proper word for that or they might bribe you to mm-hmm. uh, give them the proper uh, justice that they think they deserve although it's not necessarily what the rule of law would probably mm-hmm. say you know and then yeah. um, sabi mo nga that was the toughest decision that you have to do pero wala namang pumilit sa iyo parang wala namang Wala naman nag-udyok sa'yo. Do you have family in New Zealand? Do you have relatives in New Zealand? Reasons why it's very difficult, Pime, because we have no relatives in New Zealand. It's really an adventure uh, to go in a place wherein you will really start uh, from nothing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, Ganon so, din kami. Wala rin kaming relatives when we moved to New Zealand. So what was your life like when you moved to New Zealand? Of course, hindi ka naman magsa-start as a lawyer. Um, you have to probably study again or you probably mm-hmm. have to repackage yourself some as somebody else just to kickstart your your life in New Zealand. So, what was it like for you when you landed and you realized, okay guys, I Papa <laughs> needs to start looking for a job. What was that like for you? Um, well, um I arrived in New Zealand about three years ago, Mimi, on a student visa. So definitely, I still have to study. Um, and because we have no relatives here, um, my family moved to New Zealand on installment basis, so, so to speak. So ako yung nauna. I was the first one to arrive. Um, then uh, after about three to four months, uh, my wife followed. Then after another three and four months, I felt the kids from the Philippines so when I arrived here I have to study again um, but it was not related to law I, I studied um, postgraduate diploma in business administration uh, it was a level 8 program uh, primarily the reason was because um, uh, immigration policies then would allow uh. me to bring my family uh. with me so yeah that's that's how I, I started here and because of my background and considering that i was only on student visa of course um finding a job is uh, really difficult yeah so ibi sabihin but uh, you have to tighten your first strings at dapat kargado ka before you mm-hmm. you went to yeah. new zealand <laughs> diba? you have to have yes, a, yes. A, a, that amount of money na sinasabi nila when you apply that would enable you to at least survive in the next four to six months living mm-hmm. on your mm-hmm your show money kumbaga sila yeah, sabi yeah. nila okay so what was your transition like so you studied something else uh, diploma in postgraduate diploma in business administration how were you slowly inching your way back to the legal profession in New Zealand paano yung pathway yeah. mo doon yeah so while I was studying I, I, I tried to know how to become a lawyer here and also I'd like to be familiarized with how the legal system works here so um, 
um, I, I I was able to look for a job um, that really caters what I need, um, and that is um, serving as court interpreter for Filipinos who are uh, litigants, be it as a witness or as uh, as respondents in a criminal case here in the district courts. Um, yeah, so I started there, and then um, I had my legal qualifications assessed by the New Zealand uh, Council of Legal Education, and I still waited for about um, several months for my results to arrive because during the time that I submitted my application, uh, their, their building in Wellington was renovated. So there uh -huh. was quite a delay. But eventually, they, they released my uh, assessment. And there, I, I knew that I will be taking up a low subject at a low school here. And then I will be taking the New Zealand uh, Law and Practice Examination. With it, which is uh, the equivalent of our Philippine bar examinations. Mm -hmm. So, pa, pahirap na nang pahirap, pero pa exciting <laughs> na nang pa exciting because that's your love, no? So, what mm -hmm. can you say are the differences and the similarities of what you studied in the Philippines versus uh, those things that you studied about law in New Zealand? Malaki ba ang stark difference? Na shaka ba sa mga pinag-aralan mo? Or did you find na, okay, sisiyo lang yan because I already know this before. It's just a matter of a review for me. Um, that's the hardest part, Mimi, because it's not a review for me. Um, I have to unlearn almost everything that I learned as a lawyer in the Philippines because Philippine laws are not applicable here in New Zealand. And uh, I have to adjust with the way they, they, they write uh, their, their legal uh, writings here. It's quite different. Even the way um case laws are written here are quite different from from that in the philippines so it's quite a big adjustment for me um as a lawyer for more than 13 years in the philippines when you encounter a set of facts or a legal problem you have the tendency to have a definite answer already from your brain mm -hmm. because of your stock knowledge mm -hmm. but because the laws here are different and the, the jurisprudence are different. So it's not really a review. So and, it's a total uh, new whole new world yeah. for you. <laughs> <laughs> a whole new world, Mimi, a whole new wow. world. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the, if you have to ask me um, whether it's that the law school setting here, seating here is, is different from the Philippines, I would say so. On the Philippines, um, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure that uh, uh, every lawyer, every law student would agree with me that uh, being a law student would mean that every time you, you report to class, you have to be ready with the graded recitation. Mm -hmm. And it is a closed book thing. You cannot yeah. open your notes. Yeah. And the professor would just uh, uh, randomly pick a name from the class cards. And then once your name is picked, he will ask you the ruling of the Supreme Court. In this particular case, you have to discuss everything. Mm -hmm. Here in New Zealand, um, you just have to listen. There's no graded recitation. But the... The way they uh, frame their exams here is in such a way that you have to write everything that you know, right. even if it's not being asked by the professor. Unlike in the Philippines, you just have to answer directly, as short as possible, as long as it's, it's duly supported by legal uh, basis and uh, jurisprudence, you're all good. Here in New Zealand, even if it is not being asked by the law professor, you have to write everything that you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. So it's a different way of learning. It's a different way of taking exams. It's a different way of assessing. But at the end of the day, you managed to pull through it. And now I can reveal na successfully, na sabi mo nga, you are now a newly admitted barrister and kasama ka na sa New Zealand High Court. Tama ba yun? Um, High Court of New Zealand. So, Ano ba yan? Parang when you say High Court of New Zealand, is that equivalent to the Philippine Supreme Court? Um, yes, Mimi, in a way, it is equivalent to the Philippine Supreme Court. But when you say High Court in New Zealand, it is composed actually of the High Court, the Court of Appeal, and the Supreme Court of New Zealand. 
Right. Into Tatlong one. entity. Okay, Tatlong. parang yung oh. <laughs> legislative, executive, at saka mm-hmm. yung judiciary nagkasama-sama mm-hmm. na doon. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, yeah. and since <laughs> when did you start becoming um, a barrister and a part of the High Court of New Zealand? Um, I, I was formally admitted, Mimi, only last 29th of October. Wow, um, so newbie, newbie. It, it was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just a newbie. And it was through a um, a uh, ceremony of uh, via teleconference so it was not the traditional way of uh, going to the high court with uh, all the ceremonies it was just through a uh, teleconference but uh, it's all good yeah. it has the same legal effect yeah i really wish to congratulate you because i'm i'm not sure how many filipinos are in the new zealand high court Can you tell me the population of Filipinos there? Are you the only Filipino barrister there? Or there's a small group of you that uh, belong to that elite lawyers working for um, the, the High Court of New Zealand? I'm sure there are already um, Filipinos here are barristers and solicitors of the High Court of New Zealand. But I'm not really sure uh, how many of them are really from the Philippines who were also lawyers before coming over here some um, have already studied and uh, some are already uh, New Zealand citizens already when they studied here uh-huh. so but uh, I can say that there's quite a few already in New Zealand uh-huh. Uh-huh. so you're not the only one <laughs> hindi ka I'm not the only one pero <laughs> what are your principal duties or what are, what is your main role as a barrister being involved with that organization. Uh, meron ka bang specific assignment or are you kind of like a generalist? Um, how can you describe to people who don't understand the rule of of the courts in New Zealand what your job is? Okay, so just to have an, a perspective, in the Philippines, when you are admitted uh, as an attorney at law by the Supreme Court, then you are entitled already to practice law. In New Zealand, in order for you to become a lawyer, you have to be admitted as a barrister and solicitor of the High Court of New Zealand. So it is a general term that refers to being you as a lawyer entitled to practice here in New Zealand. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a reverse. It's kind of like a reverse <laughs> thing. It just it, I'm not sure if it's really reverse, pero parang naiba lang yung process niya, nabalik talaga yung process niya. So um in that sense Your everyday life does that revolve around um, clients only, or do you also have an element of teaching? Can you also teach in New Zealand now? Because I know you used to teach also in the Philippines. Pero Jan, are you allowed to do that as a barrister legally uh, employed in that profession? Now, uh, um, if you have to be strict about uh, the term Mimi, when you say barrister. It refers to somebody who specializes in trial work. Uh-huh. So those who appear in court. When you say solicitor, those lawyers who really uh, meet the clients face to face and do the transactional work. But uh, when you say barrister and solicitor, uh, generally speaking, especially in the modern days, they just refer to you as a lawyer. Uh, so practically, it's up to you whether to engage in the academe or to do trial work or to specialize in a different area of law. But then the one thing that I noticed, Mimi, in the Philippines, you can, you can once admitted as a lawyer there, you can do anything that you want, uh, area of law that you choose. Um, there's no more uh, process for you to undergo so to speak but here in New Zealand um, if you're admitted as a barrister and solicitor before you are able to practice on your own you have to be connected first with a law firm for a period of at least three years uh-huh. so it's not really automatic that you can do whatever you want in practice okay. but it all depends on you uh, yeah. what's your passion uh-huh. your area of law that you like So, if you say, in your case, what do you think your future pathway would be like? Since it looks like the world is your <laughs> oyster, and there are so many pathways <laughs> that you can take. What What is your kind of thinking at this point in time? Um, at the moment, Mimi, I'm highly considering criminal law because uh, predominantly my practice in the Philippines involves uh, criminal cases. 
But uh, uh, one more thing, um, I, I have not seen a Filipino lawyer here who is specializing in criminal law. Uh-huh. Um, in my almost or in my more than two years of being a court interpreter here, I, I have yet to meet a Filipino lawyer who is practicing criminal law. So that's one area that I'm trying to explore right now. Uh-huh. But of course, I'm also considering other areas just like property law, um, family law, and of course, immigration law. Uh-huh. Those are other options also. Wow. Uh, sige, isama mo ako sa immigration law. <laughs> ano ko yan eh? I'm passionate about that because um, we established a charitable trust in Wellington that helps migrants who are in need. Whether they are mm-hmm. Filipinos or non-Filipinos, they call it Kasagip, uh, charitable mm-hmm. trust. So, uh, marami rin kami mga tinutulungan and I do help them with their CV. I help them write letters to immigration. So, I'm a little mm-hmm. bit passionate around <laughs> that space. So, does that mean, Richard, na when you say uh, you are a barrister or an associate in New Zealand, you have your own practice na. You're not associated with a, another organization. You can do it on your own. Like Perillo and associate something like that. Can you do that, or do you have to be employed by the government to to do your job? What's it like there in New Zealand? Um, after being admitted, Mimi, you still have to be connected with a law firm here. You cannot still practice on your own. So you have to look for a firm that will, well, technically speaking, will employ you, mm-hmm. <laughs> to allow so you to you, practice. Uh, do you have that already? Are you uh, in a law firm now? And what is the specialization of that law firm? As, as of the moment, I'm still hunting, Mimi. I'm still, oh, hunting, still hunting for. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. open, <laughs> open for yeah. the negotiation. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And and I also um found in, in the information that you gave me is you also volunteer on the side. So can you tell mm-hmm. our listeners and our audience? Ano ba to? May time ka pa volunteer? What are you doing in your volunteer work? Yeah, um, while I, I was still uh, reviewing, Mimi, I, I volunteered uh, the Auckland City District Police uh, as part of their International Student Ambassador Group. So practically, um, we meet uh, once a month uh-huh. and we discuss crime prevention because of my advocacy, of, of course, and passion about criminal law. And we disseminate this to uh, predominantly uh, international students because, um, sad to say, while New Zealand is um, a highly safe place, there are uh-huh. still scammers uh, uh, ongoing and with their operations here. And one of the most vulnerable sectors is, of course, the international students. So uh, we were then working with the Auckland City District Police to help international students become more aware and to prevent any untoward incidents or of course, uh, to prevent um, any uh, the commission of crimes against them. Uh-huh. And I also had the opportunity to do volunteer work at the Philippine Honorary Consulate here in Auckland. So uh, um, we helped the consul and vice consul in dealing with clients and their notarization uh, of documents and uh, notarization of, for example, SPAs in the uh-huh. processing of their visas and uh, of course, their uh, uh, NBI clearance, processing wow. of NBI clearance. Very ano ka, diverse, diverse experience. <laughs> Pero uh, based on what you know, so th- we're not going to do exact figures, exact statistics or things like that. Um, in general, ba, the, are the Filipinos um, caught in the legal system? Are there a lot of Filipinos caught in the legal system? Marami bang mga Filipinos, sad to say, na nadadawit sa mga criminal acts or are uh, only very very few compared to you know the rest of the population um i would say unfortunately mimi the number one offense that i usually uh, interpret uh in court setting is uh, drink driving offenses oh, so okay. that's the very common crime committed by filipinos here um, there are also serious crimes involved, but uh, very rare. Mm-hmm. But um, with the with the volume of the interpreting work that I have rendered so far, I would say that the number one crime committed by Filipinos here, the most common, is drink driving. 
Nako, I will not be surprised kasi na, even here we have the the show from New Zealand that's called Police 107. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, no, 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 no. And obviously, it's about, you know, drink, driving, and, you know, uh, drugs in, in the car and things like that. I won't be surprised kasi wala namang masyadong pagkakaabalahan ng mga tao, di ba? So, usually, mm-hmm. siguro mm-hmm. pag na-invite ka to to uh, to a party or to a gathering, you cannot help mm-hmm. but but drink uh, ang ang kaibahan nga lang siguro nakakalimutan mo na there's only a limit as to how much you can drink before yes, your yes. you read over the limit and then that is obviously a, an offense and then you get mm-hmm. fined for that or worse you get uh, jailed for for that um meron pa ako isang interesting na tanong sa Richard why do you as barristers and solicitors in New Zealand and even here in Australia wear the white wig um, sa Philippines that, wala I, naman. I don't think in the Philippines you you wear your your the white wig when you do your legal work, di ba? I don't think yes. I've seen a Filipino do that. Yes. Um. Actually, it's a tradition, Mimi, uh, that goes back uh, to the 17th century. Um. So they they wear this um uh wig in order for the profession, the legal profession, to be distinguished from society. So practically, mm-hmm. parang status symbol siya. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in actual practice here, when you appear in court, you no longer wear the wig. Uh, I think they abolished it sometime in the middle of the 1990s. But you just have to wear the, the, the black gown. Um, yeah, it's for ceremonial purposes only, Mimi, as of the moment. Uh, especially if there are new newly admitted barristers and solicitors. Yeah, okay. So, ano, ka, naiisip ko kasi it's so hot already. And then if you wear the wig, you'll be perspiring as you as you face your litigants and all of that stuff. So, Richard, one thing that I'm also curious is how this integrates with the Maori law. How your profession, um, you know, uh, takes into consideration the the cultural aspects of 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 the law. Because alam naman natin, Maoris have they're very unique, specialized ways of doing things, di ba? From eating, from health. Uh, I've worked in the health sector, so marami din sila mga cultural practices na ino-observe. Um, how do that uh, cultural practice play in, uh, take into place in terms of law? Uh, are, uh, do they have a separate law? Or are the Maori laws integrated into the general New Zealand uh, legal system? Um, actually, uh, laws in New Zealand apply to everybody. Um, only that um, the laws here have to abide with the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, but other than that, whether you're a Maori, you're a Pakeha, or you're a Filipino, or whatever, you have to abide by the law. So yeah. it's a generality principle, so to speak. Uh, for example, in criminal law, everyone it's must abide the by the way. law. That's yes. right. That's good. That's good. Uh, so my naman tayo. Let's go lighter because we're going towards the end of, of uh, the show. Um, how is your family coping with your new life and new new profession in New Zealand? Uh, do they predict that you'll be very, very busy? Nakapag-adapt na ba yung mga kids mo to living a new life in New Zealand? Are you more busy there being involved with Filipino community? Or are you more chill now? Because, you know, it's pretty quiet in New Zealand. There's not a lot of, you know, kaguluhang mga nagaganap there. Uh, give us a little bit of a sense of how you as the new batch of uh, migrants live there in that country now? Um, my, my kids have adapted quite well uh, in New Zealand, Mimi. Um, even the intonation, the pronunciation, the way they speak, they were able to adjust in just a matter of two to three months. Um, my wife also is, uh, uh, yeah, she, she is finding here quite more relaxed than in the Philippines and I believe that is the general consensus. Um, the life and work balance here is pretty good, pretty, uh, pretty balanced and yeah but it's still a transition period for us mm. um, especially with the, the lockdown ongoing um, but hopefully soon we'll go back to normal. 
Normal. Yeah, yeah. Sa inyo nga lang, isang case, dalawang case nga lang, eh, lockdown agad. <laughs> That's how rigorous uh, New Zealand really protects its land, its borders, mm-hmm. the safety mm-hmm. of its people. Talagang hats off ako and I'm I'm still a proud TV Pinoy and, and, and I try my best to really be up to date in terms of the things that are going on in, in, in New Zealand and hopefully we can visit there someday. So Richard, doon naman sa mga Pinoy na nangangarap na makapunta sa New Zealand, Would you recommend that they still take the student pathway to to enter the country? Because I know si Ambagari is always warning students na wag mas scam, especially na mga agents na nag, you know they promise that the students mm-hmm. can, can come here. Pero once na nandito na and something happens to the students, there's absolutely no support from from those recruiters, if you might want to call mm-hmm. it recruiters. So in your case, you came as a student, you've done your job, uh, you've done all the things that you needed to do, you're successful now. Pero what about those other kababayans who are still dreaming of going to the, that beautiful country, New Zealand? What's, what's your take on that? What's your advice to them? My number one advice, Mimi, would be for them to explore the Immigration of New Zealand website. The website is designed in such a way that is that it is very straightforward. Every information that you would like to know in so far as migrating here uh, is stated there. So all they have to do is just explore and uh, educate themselves. Never rely on hearsay, never li- rely on uh, on uh, promotions given by any entities you have to research on your own first so that if you are empowered with the uh, knowledge that you have uh, gained then definitely you will be able to plan uh, better your pathway mm-hmm. and what uh, what is your opinion man on the new i'm not sure if it's a bill or a proposal or a law or an act that Um, makes it more flexible for Filipinos or any other migrant, for example, to uh, finally get closer to the permanent residence na matatagal na nilang inaasam-asam. I know that's a hot topic there at the moment. So what's what's going on in that space now? Yeah, it's a one-off residency uh, uh, policy of the Immigration New Zealand. And I am very fortunate that I am also eligible to avail of that. Uh, Mimi, but uh, we are we. My family and I will be on the batch too, so we'll be able to apply by March of next year. That's so okay. it's March a good, is not too yeah. far away. Not too far yeah. away. And uh, that's the good thing about it, Mimi, is that if you go, if you rewind um, about the pandemic last year, everything is bad news. Everything is down. Everything is depressing. But try to think of it. If there is no pandemic. There is also no one-off residency uh, policy, so mm-hmm. it's a blessing because of the pandemic. So I think there's a lesson for us to learn about it that regardless of the bad situations happening in our life, we just have to be uh, tough. We just have to persevere. And at the end of the day, we'll be able to reach our goals. Mm-hmm. Wow, how inspiring the man. And, and yes, um, I can say the same thing kasi nung time ko naman that I'm applying for my permanent residency, residency there was also a change in the number of years that you needed to be there. Kasi di ba mm-hmm. when you apply for PR, uh, merong three-year period, may like mm-hmm. that six-year period, tapos mm-hmm. may like two-year period. Uh, I was also at the crossroads at that time. So I felt I was lucky enough to be in that moment in time where those changes were made so again it's another advance congratulations to your family dahil by march eligible na kayo to apply for that um new ruling and it will potentially uh speed uh, fast track uh, or mm-hmm. speed up mm-hmm. the process for a lot of filipinos who are you know waiting for that day to come So congratulations uh, on that. So Richard, I wish I can go on and on and on because I really enjoy talking to you and I really enjoy <laughs> listening to your experiences. But the show must come to an end. So if you don't mind, I will um, just officially close. Um, so thank you again for your time. And for those who want uh, more information about Richard's job or uh, you have um, another interesting topic that you want me to Uh, take up for the next few episodes please reach out to me my email address you can find at the 
description below. Samutsari is a member of the Gorilla Podcast Syndicate here in Australia. You can reach out to me through Gorilla Podcast Syndicate or through my Facebook page, Samutsari Conversations with Mimi, or through my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Richard. All the best Thank to you me. and all the best to your family. And uh, Likewise. for all those, those listening to us, tune in to more episodes of Samutsari. Bye. Bye, Richard. Bye, Bye. everyone. Bye-bye. If you find value in this episode, make sure you like and subscribe to be notified of new releases. If you have any questions or suggestions, please reach out to Gorilla Podcast or send us an email at mimi at dinosocial.com. Spread the word and don't forget to tune in next time.